Six years ago, the sun appeared to be setting on the California dream. Plummeting home prices and soaring debt were robbing the golden state of its luster. As we reported on Sunday morning back then, plenty of Californians were ready to give up hope. Is the California dream kind of dying? It's, it's not dying, it's dead. It was a crisis to be sure, but in politics, crisis is just another word for opportunity. The state was in massive debt, uh, 27 billion. Uh, there was great uncertainty. Over a million people had lost their jobs. Well, that was then. Now California is coming back. Is that your doing? Uh, it's in part my doing, uh, certainly. How are you? It's hard to imagine who would have wanted to become governor of a state that was in such a sorry state. But in 2010, Jerry Brown certainly did. And last November, voters rewarded him for leading California back from the brink, electing him to an unprecedented fourth term as governor. Come on in. I think we're going to sit over here. Hi. The state once again boasts the world's eighth largest economy, bigger than Russia's, and it even posted a budget surplus last year. This way? Okay. The governor regularly receives foreign dignitaries, right. befitting California's status as a high-tech superpower. To the extent that climate change occurs, and it is occurring, and uh, droughts and extreme weather, uh, that will accelerate immigration. The secret to Jerry Brown's success? Raising taxes while cutting spending. Policies that have angered his fellow Democrats nearly as much as Republicans. You had to push Democrats in California to accept a lot of the cuts that you proposed. I still have to push Democrats and Republicans. There, there's, a, there's endless desires. The way I say it is, first you have a desire, and then you make it a need, then you make it a right, and pretty soon you got a law. Then as soon as you got a law, you got a lawsuit. You gotta be able to say no, because this government is not something you just milk uh, forever. Because as you know, I don't like to spend money. And that, but that's not because I'm conservative, just because I'm cheap. <laughs> For decades, Jerry Brown has always charted a unique course in politics. His father, Pat Brown, was elected governor of California in 1958. Edmund Brown Jr. was hardly the heir apparent. At the time, he was studying to become a Jesuit priest. But politics proved to be his true calling. I know that Edmund G. Brown Jr. has got two votes. Yeah, that I know. And in 1974, Jerry Brown won his father's old job. It is a unique experience at the age of 36 to find myself elected governor of the largest state in the Union. He encountered a political landscape that's all too familiar today. An election is not at an end, rather, it's a beginning. It's fair to say that people want a new spirit, but they don't want to pay a lot of money for it. <laughs> Famously frugal, Brown dispensed with the limos and private planes of his predecessor, Ronald Reagan, favoring blue Plymouth sedans. He was a creature of the 1970s, and the bachelor governor made waves for dating singer Linda Ronstadt. In office, his track record was solid, but Brown also pursued ideas that were ahead of their time. An advocate for the environment and alternative energy, he even wanted the state to launch its own research satellite. Brown's stellar ambitions earned him a long-lasting nickname. Have you uh, finally purged Governor Moonbeam? That was a, a little moniker that I had to live with for a while, but it was a reflection of the fact that we were trying to do uh, very innovative things that seemed a bit uh, you know, outlandish then. His presidential ambitions were no less outlandish. He ran three times, and each time he found his Thank campaigns at odds much. with the Democratic the establishment. It's a cause they can't buy, a force they can't stop. On Tuesday, don't vote for me. Vote for yourselves. Today, at age 76, Jerry Brown is the establishment, an exemplar of the adage, what goes around, comes around. The path back to Sacramento wasn't easy. He served as mayor of Oakland, then attorney general, before running a heated race to succeed Arnold Schwarzenegger. People know California is not perfect. We got our problems, but boy, what That's momentum do we now have? His last re-election was easier. He swept back into office with 59% of the vote. This takes everybody uh, pitching in. 
He also convinced voters in the drought-stricken state to approve a $7.5 billion plan that includes new reservoirs, dams, and water tunnels. And Brown remains committed to building a controversial high-speed rail line from San Francisco to Los Angeles. Well, if I could use a biblical admonition, he who perseveres will be saved. And perseverance is something I learned very early in life. And I wouldn't be here um, as governor these many decades later if I didn't have that habit of sticking to it. Is it frustrating to be 40 years later fighting the same battles? Think about the alternative. To be frustrated is a real pleasure. If Brown has mellowed in recent years, many attribute it to his 2005 marriage to Ann Gust, a former executive with The Gap. For both of them, it was their first marriage. You got married said, after 15 years of dating. You were pushed. Do I understand correctly? You were pushed Not to... Not pushed. No, just due diligence. <laughs> Aha. You just decided it was just time. Just evolve. These things evolve. They've evolved He's into a working well partnership as well, on, with Gust Brown serving without pay as special counsel to the governor. He gave you the, the title, counsel? Yes. How do you give that counsel? Well, in different ways at different times. Not uh, publicly. <laughs> yes. I try not to do it publicly. Usually I start it with Edmund. I'm, when I'm really giving him serious advice, I'm usually calling him Edmund. Uh, but. Jerry, I have to give him a lot of credit because he really listens. You're always willing to change your mind? Mm. Well, no, I didn't I, say that. Yeah, I did well, not say that. Well, I've been accused that. of that. Uh, <laughs> but I know I'm willing to. I'm interested in what, you know, what's true, what, what is the circumstance. And that takes a clarity of mind and an openness, in some ways maybe some humility. Uh, but I, I do strive for that. Humility is not a term often heard in politics here in Sacramento and certainly not in our nation's capital. Does Washington have some things to learn about how political problems have been solved here in California? Well, in Washington, some of the people are afraid uh, to pass a, a tax because it affects the economy. Well, it, we create a million jobs with that new temporary tax, uh, but we also cut and we've made cuts that I think even in Washington they've been reluctant to do. They got to get out of their comfort zone, give up the ideological edges, and find what it means to be a, an American a, at heart. The long, strange journey of Jerry Brown is far from over. And in the man who's spent much of his life wielding power, this you can still recognize the searching normal. seminarian who 40 years ago found himself at the helm of his state. If you could say something to that 36-year-old now, <sighs> Is there some advice you might give him? Um, you know, I don't know that you can give advice uh, to young men in a hurry. I don't think I would have listened to it if I had heard it then. Are you still in a hurry? I don't feel quite in a hurry, but I do feel the, the same zeal. Virtually every morning I get up excited about what I'm doing, ready to dig in, and I can't even explain to you why. I just love being governor, and I like what I'm doing, and I think we're making some progress.